Hello friends, you are watching C Programming Tutorial Classes brought to you by AngPro Training. And guys, topics for this class are jump statements, nested if statement, nested if false, else if ladder, and some example programs. Okay, first we'll start up a class with jump statements. These are also called as a branching statements in C language. These statements transfer control to another part of the program. So we place uh, these jump statements in some code, in a, in a particular block of code. When the control encounters the jump statement, the control transfer to some other part of the program. We use them when we want to break any condition or to continue a block of code by skipping some statements. So when we start doing the example programs, you will understand how to use them and how to perform them. The, there are three types of jump statements called go to, break and continue. All three of these are keywords you have to use as they are. Now let's go and write some program to transfer first go to. So in this class we'll be learning only the go to statement. In the in the coming classes, we'll be learning the break and continue statements, right? So now let's go and try the go to statement. In this program, I'll be demonstrating the go to statement. So we can use the go to statement uh, along with the if else structure. So it is highly not recommended uh, to use in C language. I'll explain you the working procedure of go to statement. It's up to you to use it or not in the program all right uh, let's write this program for checking uh, a number for its positiveness if the number is positive uh, the user will get a message the number is positive if it is negative he will get some other message so so for doing that i'll use if else along with go to statements right int num okay i've got printf and scanf statements to accept the number so here first I'll say uh, I'll check for the number here so if the num is if the content of num is less than 0 so I will pass the control to some other part of the program go to a right so a is an identifier here uh, it is like a marker in the program it marks a particular statement I'll show you how how it it can be used okay so it is a part of go to statement else go to b right so if num is less than 0 go to a when when control comes here it checks for the number uh, whether it is less than 0 or not if it is less than 0 so control comes to this line it checks it executes this line so what it what it is encountering here go to a so control passes to the block uh, which is labeled as a so a is a label here right so I will define the block of code with the label a here so remember so this this is how we label a block a with colon right here open and close the curly brackets if you want if you have multiple statements otherwise you can have uh, the statement without any curly brackets so right this so this is the uh, block a I can call this block with the label so I label this block with a and now I'll create another block one more block with the label B so when the control comes to this statement if number is less than 0 go to a so it jumps to this part it jumps control jumps to uh, the block which is labeled as a else go to b if number is not less than 0 the control will execute the else part right in the else part we uh, we have put the go to statement which means the control jumps to b block if num less than 0 i will say printf negative number right if number is greater than 0 printf positive number right so in the same way you can also have one more go to uh, 
if the number is equal to zero. I'm just giving you uh, the basic understanding how go to works, right? Control F9. So we have got two errors. Let us find out unreachable code. That means so it is else. I missed. I uh, misspelled the word s right else and I should not have the semicolon at the end of his statement remember this control f9 enter a number to check 4 positive number so that means 4 is stored here 4 is less than 0 no so it comes to else part go to b b positive number so that is what happened right let's run this again control f9 Oh God, we have got negative number as well as positive number, right? So what's happened here? So when I entered minus 4, so control checks this statement, minus 4 is less than 0, yes. So go to A, so control comes here, so it prints negative number as well as positive number because it continues the checking this code as well, this block as well, because after this statement, this block continues. So here, I should have one more go to telling uh, go to end, right? So I should skip these or all these statements, right? I will have the end here. So this is the end block. So what after end is get ch? So get ch is the uh, last statement, right? So whenever the control comes to this statement, it will print the negative number as well as it will check the go to statement and it comes to the end part. So let's try this again. Control F9 minus 4 negative number. Yes, that's we have got. So see how difficult it is using go to right? It makes the programmer confused. So so I just given you the example how go to works. So now we will understand what is nested if statement. What do you mean by nesting? Nesting is just uh, putting a code inside another code, right? So here in the nested if statement, we'll put one if statement, one block of if inside another block. So we'll see how to do that. First we'll put the if condition, then we open the curly bracket and we'll put another if condition inside the main if condition. So just look at, just observe this structure. First the control comes to the, this statement here. It checks for the condition and it enters into this if only if this condition is true. Otherwise it will skip this entire block of code. Say suppose the condition is evaluated to true and the control comes inside the loop comes inside this code block and it again check for another condition where we have put here. So it checks for then another condition which is here. This second if, the inner if. Right? If this condition is evaluated to true, this block, this inner block will be executed. Otherwise, these statements anyhow be executed only when this condition is true. So the execution of these statements is dependent on the truthness of both these condition right now look at the nested if else it is same as nested if here we are nesting if and else both inside the if else so first we check for the if condition then again we get into the if condition and again check for the and again check for another if that is evaluated to true we'll execute one or more statements otherwise a default set of statements. So this is a complete if-else structure placed inside one if structure. So this if or else will be executed only when this if condition is true. Otherwise this will be definitely executed. So this is one if-else containing another if-else in it. You can have another if-else inside the else block also or if statement alone. So like this you can have any number of nesting. Okay. So inside this inner if you can have any number of if else statements to have multiple levels of nested if else. So friends in this program I am going to find out the biggest number among three numbers by using the nested if statement. So let's go and do that. So for that I will be using through I'll 
for that I'll be using three variables namely n1, n2 and n3 okay so using this scanf statement I'm going to accept three integer numbers so let's see how we can use a uh, nested if statements how we can nest the if statements to check biggest of three so first I have to compare the variable n1 with the other two variables right for n1 to be biggest it has to be more than other two variables so here I'll tell if n1 is more than n2 then go inside checking for n1 more than n3 so this is the first condition that we will check if n1 is more than n2 we will compare it with n3 if that will also if that is also true i will print n1 that is percent d is biggest right that is n1 so this is how we nested the if statement so by this you can so using this you can nest the if statement else if that is not happened else here I'll use again if so you can combine if statement so you can nest if statement inside else else inside if so you can have any so you can have any levels of nesting and any if statement inside any any other if statement okay so if n2 is more than n1 right I can have one more nesting here So if n2 is also more than n3, I will say n2 is the biggest, right? Or uh, percent d is biggest. So that means n2. So if none of this is true, of course n3 is the biggest so just watch here I'm making the indentation to understand it properly so ju I'm just pressing the tab key from the keyboard so I'm making it look better so this is one level this is one if so this will be checked now if if n2 is more than n3 this will be printed otherwise number 3 will be printed right so control f9 so let's go and have 5 6 and 7 yes 7 is the biggest now so let's make the second number biggest now 5 6 and 3 yes 6 is the biggest control f9 3 2 1 3 is the biggest so that's how it's working so have you have so have you got the understanding of this uh, structure we have just included the if statement inside another if so it is just a logic okay so so how n1 can be biggest if it is more than n2 and n3 only it can be biggest right so that is what we are checking here if n if n1 is more than n2 let's go and check we are telling the compiler go and check uh, go and compare the n1 with n3 also and if it is true then print n1 is biggest otherwise come to this part come to else part this else is uh, in pair with this if right so these if and else are in pair right if this is not executed else will be definitely executed if n1 is not more than n2 then either n2 or n3 will be the biggest right so if not n1 we are checking for n2 and n3 if n2 is more than n1 and n3 it is biggest else obviously n3 will be the biggest so that is what happened here right i hope you understood this program
when you go and do such programs more and more you will be uh, you will be master in nesting the if statements so, so this is this is a very important and very useful a uh, concept in c language and it will you will find it very useful in your future programs if you once if you master on this structuring and the last type of control statement which is else if ladder so ladder means the same here it is uh, containing the multiple steps of else if conditions so first we'll test for the if condition a followed by a condition number 1 if the condition is true we'll execute a set of statements or a statement if not we'll go for checking another condition with having the keyword else if so put the space between else and if so they come in pair but you must have the space between else and if followed by the condition so first we'll check for this condition if this condition is false we'll go for another condition that is condition number 2 which is in else if block if that also got false we'll go for the condition number 3 so which is also put in else if block so like this we can continue any number of else ifs having the multiple conditions only executed when the previous condition is false so else if test condition number 4 like up to n at last we are going to have the else block which is definitely be executed when all the above conditions if and else if conditions are false right else is like a default block it is definitely be executed when all the above conditions are evaluated to false like say suppose i have the right condition in test condition number 3 then so then the then compiler will execute all the statement inside this block this condition number 3 block and all the other statements below this block are skipped right so this is how else if ladder works well friends in this program i am going to accept a uh, student marks percentage of marks and assign a class for that if the inputted marks is more than 90% i'll say first class if it is more than 80 and below 90 it would be the second class if it is more than 73rd more than 50 is just pass so depending on the Uh, incoming number uh, the input and number i'll be assigning a uh, various classes to them so here i'm going to check uh, for many con here i'm going to check for many conditions so it is suitable here to use the else if ladder structure right so i'm going to start with by declaring a number now i got the statement for accepting the percentage so first let me check it for uh, the first class right if the percent marks if the percentage of marks is more than uh, or equal to 90 is more than or equal to 90 uh, i will say you have secured first class right you have secured first class if your marks is more than 90% else else if so this is how we are going to check the second condition else put a space and type the word if followed by the condition inside the parenthesis then so no need to have parenthesis here because we have got a single statement to print so you have secured second class second class again one more else if to check one more condition else if number is more than or equal to 50 50 print f you have secured third class right so by this by doing this we can have any number of else ifs right so else else will be the last condition else will be uh, the last 
a set of statements or block where it is executed for sure when when none of the above conditions is true right here i'll be printing just pass right so let's go and run this program please enter the percentage let us say 50 so you have secured third class that's all right now say 20 just pass say 99 okay 99 you have secured first class so how is working friends so i got the number in the variable num if the content of num is more than or equal to 90 you have secured first class if it is more than or equal to 75 second class if it is more than or equal to 50 it's third or it is just pass say suppose i inputted 99% 99 is more than 90 99 is more than 75 also and which will i get it so what message will i get first class or second class first class right because which will be tested first this one right 99 is more than 90 okay so this will be printed you are you have secured first class and if the match is found here if the condition is true here so none of these statements below will be executed all the else ifs and else uh, got ignored by the compiler it directly go after the else block it will directly jump to the code which is after the else part right so if if this is if this got false this got false and this, and this got false the compiler will definitely be executed the else part so this is how we can achieve the results using else if ladder well friends that's it for the class subscribe to our channel on youtube like our page on facebook follow us on twitter and join our group on linkedin thank you